Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, man, tomorrow's already hump day. The team gets back out on the field, and Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait to see Navelle Gallimore. Navelle Gallimore is kind of like... You know, he is the guy that I really wanted to get the year before. And he showed some great flashes. When he trucked Mount Mike Pouncey on his way to Ben Roethlisberger's ass, man, I, I, I just felt, I fell in love. Man, I fell in love with that guy. You know, when he was in training camp the first day this year, and he said, you know, you get the pads on, this is where you get to smack them. You know, that's old school football. That's a guy who loves the contact and loves the hit. Unfortunately, he dislocated his elbow and it took a lot longer for him to get on the field. But I don't think you guys realize, going into the season, when we looked at our defensive front, the two guys who we kind of penciled in as starters were Tristan Hill and Navelle Gallimore. And we were okay with that because these were two young motor guys that were big that you looked at and said okay we can get a push in the middle we can try and shut down the run with these big guys that are athletic because you know dan quinn's motto fast and physical now they're not going to be running you know a 4 3 40 or anything like that but when you get a 300 pound guy moving at a 4 9 4 8 you're doing something okay so you know what's kind of interesting is I think I finally found out what I am truly good at. You know, in life, they say, if you figure out how to make a living with something you love, you never work a day in your life. Now, I love working with wood. I love it, you know, I love building things and being creative and all that, but you ain't making a great living doing that. I'm just gonna, gonna put it out there. There ain't a whole lot of money in there. In fact, there's a lot of things I do that I ain't a whole lot of money in, but I enjoy what I do. But I found out the latest thing that I seem to be really, really good at, and that is pissing people off. And it's funny because I never try to piss people off. I actually try and be that inspirational guy, that guy that's, you know, conversation teaches you things in life and stuff. But for some reason lately, all I do is piss people off. I mean, I literally have trolls out there that are making Mark Holmes hate channels where they put fart noises on everything I do. And, you know, they literally will spend eight hours watching a video to find two seconds where I might have made a mistake or correct my spelling errors. Who got that kind of time? But I saw today that I pissed off Bad Dog talking about Micah Parsons. And I think what it is is I think it's Micah Parsons' envy. You know, when you look at the Giants and how they've drafted, you know, they, they, they look at us and they see a C.D. Lamb. They see a Diggs getting, you know, nine interceptions in a season. They see Micah Parsons, a guy who didn't even play football last year, just rolling up the numbers. And then they look at their own team and it's kind of like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. And to think, to make it worse for them, they look at it and say, we could have had that guy. We had the opportunity to draft those guys, but we let them slip through our hands. And I don't think they like to be reminded about the greatness, because see, the problem for Bad Dog was the comparison of the rookie year of Micah Parsons and Lawrence Taylor. Now the problem of course is, when Lawrence Taylor came around, they were just beginning to do statistics, you know, on the defensive side. They started counting sacks, which by the way, Micah Parsons is beat. So I'm gonna try tonight and see if I can piss off Philly 500. So, right now, we have five games left. Five games left. Micah Parsons in the last five games 
has seven and a half sacks. It's an unbelievable tear. If he gets a sack this week against Washington, that will be six games in a row that he's had a sack. Something that the only other rookie to do that is, I believe, Joey, oh, I'm sorry, he'll tie Joey Bosa with that. And then I think he needs 10 games to get the record. So it, it, it'd be tough. It, it'd be tough. He'd have to literally finish out a sack every game to the end of the year. But that's okay, because just to be in that space is amazing. But let me piss off Philly 500, because I'm going to compare Micah Parsons' rookie season to Reggie White. Now, Reggie White, let's make no mistake about it. Let me say... Let me preface it this. I want you, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I'm only talking about rookie seasons here. Rookie, the first year in the NFL. Now that's not necessarily a gauge on what they will do in the future. But usually if a guy starts out well, he's going to have a career. But like Bad Dog pointed out, J.J. Watt started off on an unbelievable tear the first five years, but then couldn't stay healthy. That happens. But we're just looking at a rookie out the box. Reggie White, his rookie year, he's second on the list of sacks with 13. Where's that third? The record's 14 and a half. If Micah Parsons can continue on the pace that he's going, he should end up with 13 and a half sacks. 13 and a half sacks, which would be a half sack more than Reggie White. Reggie White, a much bigger opposing force. Now, before you get bad out of shape, because as Bad Dog pointed out, that they didn't pass the ball as much back in the day. They didn't, they didn't, they did not. They did not pass the ball as much. But amazingly, Reggie White, as a rookie, had 100 combined tackles. Now I can't find a breakdown of how many were solo and you know quarterback hits. They didn't keep all those numbers. So we don't sorry, we don't know what those other numbers were like. So we can only go by sacks and total tackles. Right now as we sit, 12 games in, Micah Parsons has 72 tackles combined. 54 of which are solo tackles, which is amazing in itself. So that means he is 28 tackles away from tying Reggie White, his rookie year. Now, 72 divided by 12 is 6. So, if he continues getting 6 tackles per game, that's 30. That would be technically two more tackles than Reggie White. But in truth and advertising, I do have to admit that Reggie played in a 16-game schedule as opposed to Micah playing in a 17-game. So technically, technically, you really can't compare apples to oranges on that. Or you go by the number of tackles per game would actually be more of a fair way. I don't know how the NFL is going to change this, but I guess, you know, it used to be we'd look at 100 yards when there was 14-game season. It's different than 100 yards, um, excuse me, um, 1,000 yards in a 14-game season was a lot harder than in 16 games and a lot harder than in 17 games. So I don't know how they're going to do it. I guess they're probably not going to, so it's going to mess up the record. But you can see that Micah Parsons, even if he does not beat those numbers, if we say, just count 16 games, because he might be resting 17. That's still rarefied air that we're talking about. 
the fact that we can go through and compare numbers of Micah Parsons with some of the greatest players in football can kind of make you say, hmm, you've got something special here. Now, we don't know how this career is going to end. We don't know how it's going to be, you know, next year, the year after. We don't know if there's going to be a catastrophic injury or something like that. God, heaven forbid. But you have the makings of a guy who is that special. The question becomes, when you get to that level and you literally start to dominate, do you lose your fire and your desire <clears throat> to work in your craft, to hone it and make it even better? To take that step into mort mortality? Because, see, a lot of guys, football comes easy. Or at least it's always come easy. And they don't really have to put in the work to be able to get to that level. But to get to that pinnacle, to be one of the greatest ever, to be a Hall of Famer, one of those few hundred guys, you have to work that much harder with those God-given talents. And we have to wait and see if Micah Parsons is going to be that guy. And let me try and make sure that it's clear that I'm not saying that I'll take Reggie White's whole career and it's equal to what Micah Parsons has done in one. No, I'm not saying that. And make sure when you come after me, Philly 500, as well as Bad Dog, understand exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about their rookie season. That's all I'm talking about. That's it. If you take that, he's up in that area. Anyway, it's getting late. It's getting a little chilly. And uh, I got to get down the road, take care of some stuff, and then I got to get back and start getting those tickets out to you guys and start planning everything that we got to do. And get whew, for the tailgate. Man. Whew. So much to do and not enough time to do it in. I hope you all are having a wonderful day, and I appreciate each and every one of you. And God willing, I'll see you in the morning before I hit the road. Have a good one.